I know some of you have been waiting for this day for ages. Since the launch of the 5700 XT, pretty much, it's the AIB Partner Day. Things are launching. So this is the 5700 XT. Sapphire is also making available the 5700 non-XT. This one, MSRP, is going to be 409 So $10 higher than uh, MSRP of the 5700 XT or the blower style. So is... $10 for this improved cooler worth it? Oh yeah, I think so. I mean, if for no other reason then you get the cool little bio switch between A and B and with the label and that kind of thing. It's dual heat pipes. It is a two and a half slot card now. So, well, two and a quarter slot, but slightly more than two slots. How about that? It's a, it's a competent card. It works really well. So just as a refresher, the base specs on the 5700 XT 40 compute units, 9.75 teraflops, 8 gigs of GDDR6, 1905 boost clock, 1755 game clock, 1605 base clock. For the clocks, the Sapphire Pulse 5700 XT improves the situation a fair bit. At the top end, the boost clock, it's only improved by 20 megahertz. You move from 1905 to 1925. That's down to binning and, and other parameters like that. I don't think that getting, you know, breaking the magical two gigahertz barrier on a pulse card. Uh, you know, there were rumors. I don't think that's reasonable. But the game clock, the game clock is quite a bit higher. So on the Sapphire Pulse 5700 XT, you can expect about 1815. So from 1755 to 1815, that's no slouch. That's a pretty good uplift. And in actually testing this card, remember it's got one eight pin and one six pin. So it's basically the same setup. Uh, it actually does work really well, and you do see a little bit of a performance uplift. It's enough to narrow the gap with the 2070 Super in a lot of games. So if you want basically 2070 Super parity performance for $409, the 5700 XT, the, the Pulse from Sapphire, um, will get you there. And Sapphire has added another trick, literally, tricks. That's the thing, because the software is called Tricks. So, to explain this feature, uh, which is available on not just the 5700 XT, 5700 series, not just Navi cards, you can use this on uh, older cards as well. You've got a card that runs butter smooth at 1080p, but at 1440p, it's just not quite doing it for you. You wish the card were a little bit faster. And there's no in between, between 1080p and 1440p. I mean, you might be able to play with the visual settings and it's like, oh, you can go from like high to medium and that'll get you where you need to go in terms of the frame rate. Wouldn't it be nice if you could render just a little bit less than 1440p, but not as low as 1080p? Well, that's what you, that's actually a feature that is in the new Trix software from Sapphire. Now, the version that I played with was a beta, but what it does is like the old school Doom, like you know how like you had a slow computer with Doom and you could get like a border around the screen, it would actually render lower. Well, this doesn't do the border, but it'll render the game at a lower resolution and then scale it up. We've seen this tricks on consoles, now it's coming to PC. And so what this does is, like if you're right at the 55 mark, at 1440p and you want it to be more like 60 or 65 or you've got like a you know a free sync monitor and you want it to be in the you know 55 to 72 hertz range well you can use this to render a little less than 1440p 2560 by 1440p and then scale it back up to 1440p and you'd be hard pressed to tell in most games it's a really interesting software feature that they've added you can combine that with uh, the Radeon Adaptive Image Scaling, or the Radeon Image Scaling RIS that we saw before, and a lot of people are using that to play uh, 1440p games at 4K native. So if they've got a 4K panel, you're actually rendering at 1440p, but then scaling up to 1440. This works really, really well. Uh, Epos Vox, Adam from Epos Vox, or Adam on the Epos Vox channel, did some work on this with me and for like PUBG you can't tell a difference with PUBG I mean it's like you have to like really really be pixel peeping and you can play PUBG at 4k it's upscaled but you know switching alt tabbing and switching back and forth and all those kinds of things is fast because you're still running at the native resolution of your display so you know in this case 4k 
there's not really a lot else to say about this graphics card. It, it runs a little cooler than the reference card. It's a little quieter than the reference card. You can ramp the fans and get even better cooling. It does have a little bit of overclocking headroom. I wasn't really able to push the boost clock much to speak of. I mean, I could push it another 20 megahertz or so, but I'm not 100% sure that it was stable. The game clock, the game clock being, you know, up, we're going from 1755 to 18 something on the game clock. And actually the numbers from, from Sapphire were even a little conservative on the game clock. Like I was seeing a little bit better performance on the game clock for the titles that, that we tested. It's just enough to put it over the edge compared to a 2070 Super. So nice job, nice job partners, nice job AMD. Certainly for around $400, it's uh it's the deal. So, well, 409 in this case. Now, depending on where you are, the PCB layout and other changes with this, this looks to be pretty much the same PCB layout. So I don't think Sapphire did anything too exotic in terms of, you know, changing the layout of the PCB. I don't see anything that's, you know, bad or anything that they've done that, that is like, oh, this is gonna be really limiting or, oh, this is gonna be problematic. The fans are replaceable. So, you know, you can just do your, your pop-in replacement. Uh, you can pick up another fan if there's some kind of fan problem, you know, three years down the road or get the warranty replacement or whatever. It's got a nice black and silver shroud, a little bit of a red aesthetic. I probably would have dropped the red and just kept black and silver if that were me, but the performance is there. It's got the performance where it counts. So that's pretty much all there is to say about this card. It's a little faster than the reference card from AMD, just a hair. Uh, but that's just enough to, I mean, when you're talking about performance with the competition, 2070 Super, well, that's enough to put it over the edge in a lot of cases, but not every case. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you're thinking about picking up a 5700 XT or you pick up the Sapphire Pulse 5700 XT, show us in a build in the forums at level one. I'm signing off and I'll see you there.